welcome to another episode. I keep saying another episode. Welcome to an episode oh, okay. of Zing This. We can go there. You got me, Zinger. And I'm Ellie. And we're going to start off on our news section today with some, um, I guess, sad news. Um, if you haven't heard already, Adam West, uh, the original Batman, um, has passed away. And... I mean, he, he's been in a lot of other stuff. He was uh, on Family Guy. He was in a ton of other stuff. And I just, you know, our, our thoughts and everything go out to the to the West family and to the, you know, the, the community at large. Um, he was definitely one of the funnest Batmans. Mm-hmm. Most so, definitely. So um, I, I, I think we, we will at some point be watching that movie. Or, or <laughs> the, the, I'm sure at some point we'll get to the Batman movies. But we will make sure that that one is included. Heck yeah. Gotta have your shark repellent. I, and some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. I know. So we, we just wanted to... I, I'm sorry to start on a somber note, but I mean, it's... Life li- life happens. But anyways, to get into some other stuff. um, I've, I've got more Batman news involving yes. the comics, but I'm going to save that for last. Okay. So let's talk about a trailer that got released. Or two trailers that got released. Um, Let's start with Marvel. Marvel released the... Out of nowhere, almost the trailer for Black Panther. It looks awesome. It it really does. Um, I I was very impressed with it. I think that you know Wakanda is something in the comics that's very technologically advanced, but still holds to a lot of strict rip, rituals and stuff. So mm-hmm. I'm very excited to see what they do with it because from the little clips we got of it, it looks it looks amazing. And I kind of liked how, you know, when Ulysses Claw was sitting there, he goes, Oh, you, you don't know anything. Cause they're like, Oh, it's a third world country. It's He's this, like, that, and the yeah, other. And he goes, no. yeah, no. <laughs> so, I mean, the El Dorado reference. Yeah. And I don't know that they felt kind of weird as, as a reference mm-hmm. as like, Oh, they, they were looking in the wrong place. And I'm like, I don't think Wakanda's made out of gold technically, but right. I guess the vibranium is as valuable, more valuable than gold. Maybe that's where it comes from. Definitely at least as valuable. Yes, um, yes. I, I would definitely agree with that. And and once again, the, the character that plays... Um, sorry, not the character. The actor that plays Black Panther is just amazing in this part. I, I, I really like it. I, I want to see more of it. I thought he did an yeah. amazing job in Civil War. Right, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm really excited to see where they go with this series. I think Marvel's definitely on the right path with this. Um, moving... On to some video game stuff. Um, E3 is going to be starting this week. Yes. I want to. So I want to make this announcement now. We will be doing a big E3 episode. Yes. But you're going to have to wait to the end of the month. We we've we've got some stuff planned. So hold your horses. We will get to it. We promise. Um, we we kind of want to wait for after E3 for the dust to settle and see if there's any lingering announcements. Yeah, because sometimes after E3, that there are some. Some stuff that's announced a week or so afterwards. Or, like with the Xbox One, that one time they said it's not backwards. I mean, it's not going to be able to play used games. And then they retracted that later. So, we kind of want to make sure that we're giving everyone, you know, their proper acknowledgement for for their for what they put into it right so um moving on we're, we're kind of gonna steamroll through this um the announcements of ultra sun and moon for the ds so the new pokemon well not new pokemon games but the redone versions of sun and moon so that's gonna be really cool if you're a pokemon fan um but the thing i kind of keyed in on was the star wars trailer and it was very i guess multiplayer heavy in a trailer Right. And um, I will confirm this from watching it and my my Star Wars knowledge as it is, Rey and um, Kylo are fighting in Mars's cantina. Yes. So I just wanted to point that out, just that that's probably has nothing to do with anything in the next movie. It's just a scene, people. Maybe. Who knows? But anyways, I, I thought the trailer was really cool. The storyline stuff was kind of light, so maybe they'll have a more storyline one. No, they had some gameplay and stuff, but like I said, we're saving all that for our E3. I just wanted to mention that that Star Wars trailer was cool. It was very cool. I love the way it looked. And it was neat seeing the different um, uh, different times. Yeah, where, where it started jumping through the different times. I yeah. I really like the beginning where it showed the first Order Troopers like on the, on the landing shuttle. Then it cut to Vader walking by Storm Troopers <laughs> and then the... Clone Troopers on Kami. It, it was a nice, you know, showing all the different generations. Nice transition. Yeah, so that, that, that was really cool. Um, yeah. 
So we're I'm sorry we're kind of barreling through news. We we got a very big topic today in discussing Wonder Woman. Um, one more trailer we're going to talk about real quick before we get into a comic-related discussion for a split second mm-hmm. is Murder on the Orient Express. Yes. What a cast. I, a very prestigious cast. Yes. But I would like to say this. I appreciate them putting it before Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. With all the crazy facial hair that was in Wonder <laughs> Woman, <laughs> seeing the Murder on the Orient, Orient Express trailer beforehand right. eased me into that the the... The totally extravagant facial hair, and and I love I love the way like it was it was so simple. But, it was, but it was definitely had quite a statement. I, I love the way it kind of slow creeped through the trailer, like the cars, the the um. The train cars. Oh, where, where it was showing all the different people. Yeah, I would of, say like the Duchess or yeah, the that was very cool, but. Or, but I, I don't want to discuss this too much. Do you think they're going to stick to the book? And, you know, no, to anything? I think it's going to be inspired by, but no. Okay. I'm, I'm just wondering how yeah. close, because everyone's going to be like, oh, it's so-and-so. Right. I, I haven't read the book, and I haven't seen any of the other interpretations, so I don't know who it is, but... I think they'll take their own spin on it. I, I'd, I'd like to think that. Yeah. I'd like to think that. Keep people guessing. <laughs> so, speaking of keeping people guessing, oh. I saw a very interesting post um, from John Negroni, okay. who is the... Um, the proprietor of the Pixar theory, he posted something comic book related. Yeah. Where it was Batman proposing to Catwoman in the newest issue of Batman, issue number 24. Now, I will admit, I have not been keeping up to date on the Batman comics per se at the moment. But this intrigued me. So I enlisted the assistance of a fellow podcaster and comic book aficionado. Nice. I enlisted the help of Toby from the Secret Transmissions podcast. Okay. Now, I, knew, I asked him, I'm like, hey, are you up to date on Batman? He goes, yes. And I'm like, hey, can you give me the rundown on what's about to happen? Because I'm, I'm interested. So I'm going to give kind of a brief summary of what he informed me of. So Do we need to say spoiler? Spoiler. Oh, okay, just saying, just saying. So basically, I'm going to try to sum it up, but he, he informed me of you know the button arc, which I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with it. It's a recent thing that they did where it was a cr- crossover between Batman and The Flash with the button from The Watchmen. And basically that ended with you know Bruce kind of being told by his father from the Flashpoint universe. Okay, I, I know there's, there's strings on a cork board right now <sighs> is what I'm saying, but just right. bear with me. It was basically told by his... Um, his father from an alternate universe to stop being Batman and to find happiness. Let Batman die. Oh, dun dun. When it comes back, I mean, when once, you know, they're back into this, he explains to me that he basically explains that Batman wants to find happiness, so he basically goes to Catwoman to basically ask her to marry him. I, I'm I'm cliff noting this heavily, by the way. But he basically asked Catwoman to marry him, and that's kind of where the issue ends. So what do you think of this, Ellie? I mean, I know that, that we've established that we're not super up-to-date on the current runs of the comics at the moment. Right. But what do you think of the possibility of Batman and Catwoman actually being married in the main continuity? Uh, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I mean, I, I kind of like the fact that, you know, they they can kind of kind of put aside their differences. Well, and can they? I don't know. Because I, I haven't I haven't finished with with my thought yet on on it. So maybe you want you want me to put in my two cents. I guess I'm referring to the way they were in. Um, Hush. No, actually, video game. The oh, Telltale. Oh, the Telltale one. Yeah. That, um, that, that you like that dynamic of I them. did, I did. Yeah. So I, I can see if if Catwoman could get over her, like, can't stay in one place for too long, mm-hmm. like if she could actually settle down, I, I, can, I can see it work. All right. Well, the, 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 the um, thing I'm going to reveal to you is that this was the last page of the issue. Oh, Okay. So that's the other reason I was a little hesitant in getting into this whole situation. So, so I want to thank Toby real quick um, from Secret Transmission for giving me this information. But I guess we're going to have to wait for the next issue to truly see what happens with this. So 
I, me personally, I I mean, I know that they get together in other universes and on other timelines and stuff. I just this this whole button situation, this whole Watchmen thing that's going on, I think is very interesting, and I kind of want to see, you know, what happens once the dust settles from everything with this, because it could change the quote unquote status quo of the comics. Or they could just reboot it in about two issues afterwards. But anyways, we'll have more stuff on some DC comics coming up very soon. But with that, let's go to a DC movie. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back... What time is it, Allie? It's Wonder Woman! Wonder Woman! Yeah! Yeah! We're going to be talking about the Wonder Woman movie. Lots of spoilers. (laughs) Lots. Strange Animals Podcast brings you weekly episodes about surprising, mysterious, or just plain strange animals. From the vampire squid to the unicorn, tune in to discover your new favorite animal. Check us out on strangeanimalspodcast.com or listen on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Zinger. And I'm Ellie. And we're going to talk about Wonder Woman. Woo! Alright, so I guess you want to get the non-spoiler review of it out of the way real quick? Sure. Go see the movie. (laughs) Yes. It's good. Um, It's a great origin story for her. If you're not familiar with Wonder Woman, don't worry. They do a really good job of not... I, I. I feel you'll get more out of it if you know the origins of Wonder Woman, but if you don't, it's not anything negative against you. Um, Ellie, your quick review of it. Um, it's a bunch of gorgeous, powerful women, and it is very artistic. It's very pretty. A lot of right. nice set pieces, and obviously some some darker ones, too, with the war stuff. But when um, I was... I don't pronounce it correctly, but uh, the island. Themyscira. Um, when they're at Themyscira, it is gorgeous. Or Paradise Island. Yes, Paradise Island. Um, but it is just, it's just really, really fun to see, um, you know, these empowering women and um, and just kind of see Wonder Woman as she, you know, kind of tries to dive into the, the real world. Understand and, man's world. <laughs> exactly. So I, I highly enjoyed it. All right. Now that we're done with that, spoiler warning, because everything else from this is going to be us deeply discussing the movie. So we apologize if you haven't seen it yet, but definitely go see it. It's a great movie. Mm-hmm. And with that, let's get into the spoilerific discussion. So I'm going to start off by saying I went into this movie. I did everything I could to avoid a lot of spoiler stuff, and I was genuinely surprised by a twist but i will get into the twist later just in case anyone is still listening right just in case and we don't need to get into that yet yeah yeah exactly that's that's way off in the movie i i um went into this with a very positive attitude i'm just saying that to begin with um i want dc to do really well trust me I, i i love comics i love the dc lore and everything from it i love marvel too but i want to see both these do well because it is amazing to go see some of the comics that I've read come to life, basically. And Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad, Man of Steel all had their ups and down moment. I feel like uh, Batman vs. Superman, as I believe I've discussed before, wasn't the worst thing in the world. It just felt like there was weird issues with it at times. And the stuff that the stuff that was good and it was good, and ironically, one of those things that was good was Wonder Woman. So... <laughs> Big surprise that the movie is doing as well as it is. And as for Suicide Squad, once again, it it had moments that were good. It's just they were surrounded by other stuff. Getting into the movie, I thought they did a great job with the origin. Um, They did a great job with, you know, her being the female lead to the movie. I I thought that it was, you know, great to finally have a comic that is based on a female. Um, Also directed by a female. And of course, played by a female, mm-hmm. and it did phenomenally well. I, th- I thought every, a lot of the moments in this movie were great. I, I didn't have as many of the pacing issues that other movies in the DC universe had, and I just I, I felt like there I wasn't watching you know chunks of a movie that were cut together. Um, I understand they did reshoots. I do have a few critiques, but I think me and Ellie will get into those near the end. Um, right. 
she was uh, Wonder Woman was obviously shown as very powerful in the movie. I I can't emphasize that enough. Well, yeah, obviously more powerful as you go along. Yes, she seemed to get more. Con- I, I actually, this is something I just thought of. She seemed to be more confident in her abilities as the movie progressed. Mm-hmm. And I thought the training montage at the beginning was done really well um, on Themyscira. I thought Themyscira was amazing. Oh, gosh. It, it felt like a very lived-in world. The whole yeah. mythology, I thought, was done really well with, you know. Well, I know you got super, super excited when um, her mother was telling her the story of the the gods and everything. I kind of got depressed, though, when it <laughs> pointed out that they all died, though. Well... Well, quote unquote died. Well, I have but a, we know in in comic book movies, especially, nobody's ever truly dead. But so. I I kind of hope that maybe not all the gods are dead from the story. Right. Well, I mean, Ares is still around, but we'll, 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 uh, later, eh. later, 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 later. <laughs> um, no, no, I was really excited about that, and I I just want to say, you know, that that part that the whole training link up to her leaving the island, I thought was done well. Mm-hmm. Um, their first interaction with man I thought was interesting because mm-hmm. even though they were technically outmatched with guns and stuff, they still won the battle. The Amazons won the battle. I thought that those fight scenes were done really can well. Can I say how, um, can I take it? Can we take a second to talk about that battle? Yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course. It was so heart wrenching though. You know, I, it, it's just because. These women are so powerful, and if it was like hand-to-hand combat, obviously with the women versus the the troops, um, hands down, obviously yeah. you know who would win. Um, but it was—I feel like it was their first time realizing that they were not invincible. I mean, the way some of them that. looked in their faces, they were just like, "What is this? Like, what is happening?" Well, I actually have a point to make later on okay. about you know, Wonder Woman's training and the way that she perceives the way war is done. Mm-hmm. But I will save that for later. Okay. Because it's not, it's not apparent here, but it, I think it will play into right. this discussion. But I mean, so, that's all I wanted to, I just wanted to say that that it was, it was really cool to see how the women, you know, they were, when they were jumping off from the top of the cliff and, and, you know, splitting arrows and to, flipping uh, horses, yeah. flipping off horses, flipping off of horses. They were there flipping we. off horses. That's yes. just rude. <laughs> well, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying though? Like it was, it was really cool to see it, but it was, it was kind of heart wrenching too. Yeah. Um, I think, like I said, that battle was done really well. The introduction of Steve Trevor, who was played by Chris Pines. I know in a lot of our reviews, we really don't dis- we kind of discuss the movie as a movie. Mm-hmm. And not, you know, the actors and stuff, even though we, we we do it every time. But right. anyways, I thought Chris Pine did a great job. Yeah. I've, I've never had anything against him. I know some people don't like him in Star Trek and stuff like that. I'm just like, I, I don't think he does the worst job. And this he did, I think, a fantastic job. And um, well, we're in the spoiler territory. And I kind of, I was kind of sad when he, when he um, sacrificed himself. Really, we're getting into that already. I'm I'm not getting into that. I'm just well, saying okay. I was I was sad when that happened. I was genuinely like, oh. But who knows? Maybe, and this was pointed out by somebody else. Maybe the Flash got there and pulled <gasps> him out of time. Maybe, ooh. Yeah. Well, you never know. I- exactly. So I mean, like I said, it, she was introduced to man's world and everything, and the, and there was a lot of politics going on, kind of. It was also pointed out that her mother said that all those things you were told as a kid were stories. Mm-hmm. So she also kind of, and, and this is Lies. something, and this is something we both kind of looked at each other at the same time when they when they were like, oh, well, they gave us a weapon to defeat Ares. We <laughs> both kind of glanced at each other and went, it's her. Yeah, the <laughs> god she, killer. <laughs> but she thinks it's a sword the whole right. time. Right. So well, of course. So they, they get the last of truth, which I thought was really well done. Yeah, that, it was very and I, bright and shiny. I kind of enjoyed the fact it wasn't an instant thing, that it, it took a little bit, which either he's really good at lying or... Well, it's he's not, a spy. Yeah, so I mean, it wasn't... I kind of... I wouldn't have liked it if it was just instantly... If it was you or me, it probably would have worked instantly. Yeah, I kind of like <laughs> that that he it took him a minute to, it, I, it for probably it to work. depends on your mental... Fortitude. Um, yes. Or how much you stuff. believe in your lie, too. I mean, it, it, obviously, in the end, it will get the job done. Right. So I thought that was very cool. And then she gathers up, you know, all of her her weapons and everything. The sword and the 
the what she thinks is the god killer. Well, it's the old quote unquote god killer, and right, you know the armor and everything. And she also takes the headband of her aunt who died, mm-hmm. which I thought was very touching. It was very. Um, and then she and Steve Trevor go off on a boat, and she does get you know sort of the you know her mom meets her and everything and gives her you know the little. I, you know, heave, heave ho, I, I commend you to go on this thing instead of, you know, I'm against it. And she's like, I'm going to go anyways. It, I, I, I'm just saying, I like the fact that they, that they had that, you know, nice little wrap up there of that whole thing. So what, so we're, we're about to move off the island. Anything else on, I mean, aside from just the amazing set piece that it was. Right. No. I thought the stuff in London was a nice little comedic break. The whole. Well, it was, it was nice to see. Her seeing things for the first time, it's like watching a, you know, a toddler when they, you know, they see things for the first yeah. time and they're like, oh, oh. wow. And it's kind of how she was. Obviously, she's, you know, grown up and an adult, but th- th- she was experiencing things that for the first time that she's never had, including ice cream. Yes, yes. Which was really cool because in the New 52 relaunch, there was an episode in Justice League um, where she is experiencing ice cream after a battle with, I think it was some harpies, um, but there's a little girl that she mean, has ice cream with. You mean the comic? Mm-hmm. That also happens in the straight-to-DVD yes. animated movie, uh, yes. Justice League. I think it's War. She okay. has it, and she ha- she has the same reaction. She's yeah. free- she freaks out over it and commends the... <laughs> so this this movie had a lot of nice little nods to yes, moments in the comics exactly. too, um, and they were subtle enough to where if you didn't know what they were, yeah, you wouldn't even notice it. So it was nice that you know it, it was nice for fans of the yes. thing to have these little nods, but it mm-hmm. didn't like take away from anyone who doesn't know about them because it still seemed like a great scene no matter what. Right, exactly. With the ice cream and you know her. You know, interacting with the secretary, and she's like, oh where I'm gosh. from, that's called slavery. She was so cute. The I, candy, candy? Yes, I absolutely loved her. She was really cool. I, I think they did a great job casting her, and she was she, she was nice comic relief in the middle of the movie to kind of, you know, move it along for the serious stuff that was coming later, so right. I thought they did a great job well, with that. Well, and she helped them with their mission, too, as kind of like the, whatever you Intelligence call... Intelligence gathering, yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. She, she helped so. them... Is helping with that, but I think one of the key important parts of this movie came up when she went into where they were, all the generals and all the politicians were arguing and everything, and she's introduced to dun, dun, dun. Sir Patrick, who I'm gonna admit this now, I was trying to place that actor mm-hmm. for the longest time, and I'll give this to David Ginsburg real quick. I um, was kind of, you know, just discussing stuff with him after the movie, you know, messaging him, and he pointed out that it's Lupin from the Harry Potter movies. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Exactly. It's oh one of those goodness. things I was sitting there the whole time, I'm like, why does that guy seem that familiar? That is so cool. And, and he pointed that out, and it instantly, like, flooded into me. I'm like, oh, he's right. So anyway, so he's in, you know, discussing stuff with other generals, you know, doing all this stuff, and... I think there's a very powerful moment there for one for um, Diana. Oh, when everybody goes quiet. No, no. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, the, it, it's pointed out in the movie that she is very beautiful and that she, you know, that all the Amazons are very, you know, well, eye catching. I don't. I don't think they necessarily was because she was beautiful. It's because it was a woman inside of the. Well, it's pointed out by people in the movie that that she is that she is very breathtaking well, as yeah. a. But I know I, yeah. I understand that. But part of it was just because it was a woman in that chamber with all those men politicians and that's unheard of well there's that part so that part leads to you know the lasso of truth you know we're going to go on this mission then they start gathering up people but that's kind of the first instance where she's wondering why these people you know are, are these the people who fight your wars why aren't, why aren't they out fighting them and it's kind of explained that oh well, they they are they just do it from here and then later on when she's in, when she's actually in the room with the discussion, she gets up in some of those generals' faces, going, "How dare you? You know, you don't, you you need to fight, you know, with your soldiers. You know, how dare you? You know, say, oh well, they can just all die for all I care. It's right. whatever. This is powerful in my mind because think about an Amazon, the 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 way she's raised as an Amazon, everything. Their generals lead their soldiers into battle. 
Like that, that, that was the way that they were trained and everything. So this is completely different for her to understand that that's how war works now is these people sit back way out of danger and command people who, you know, that they've never met to go off and die. So I think that was something very powerful in the movie that once again, it will come up later on too. Um, what, what were your thoughts on that whole little political London stuff that was going on? Um, I thought it was well done. Um, it kind of reiterated the time period mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of, it, ma- it made you be more aware of why they were having to try to hide her, you know, and, 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 um, cause just women just weren't out and about and, and strong, huge, um, figures back then. Outspoken. Yes. As she outspoken. Was. Yeah. So it's, it, it was nice the way they set that up to just remind you that, um, you know, what was going on and, and what kind of time period it was. I think we were mentioned, there, there was a lot of good humor in this. Um, the whole, you know, my father's Zeus, the whole sleeping with, um, women thing where they're on the boat between her and pines, I thought was interesting. Um, also where I just to jump back to Themyscira real quick, where he was bathing. She, there was that whole discussion, and it was actually about the watch thing. And he's like, "I'm, I'm, I'm, I'm above average specimen of of, of a man." <laughs> I, I thought, I thought that all those little nice little jokes. The um, the one, the one that I thought was very funny was where she went, "Oh, a baby," and he grabs her and goes, "That that one's not made of clay. Come on." <laughs> no, it it had it definitely had some some funny little little nods in there. All right, Ellie. Well, what, what what are your thoughts on this whole movie? Since since we're we're saving the the third act and and everything for the I guess the final part of the the movie. I mean the ugh, final part of the podcast. There we go. <laughs> um. Well, I I just I kind of wanted to talk a few minutes about um, General Ludendorff and and Doctor Poison. Awesome. Go for it. Um, I thought their dynamic was really cool. It was kind of, uh, you can't really tell if it's like, does she have respect for him because he believes in her or, um, do you think it's kind of like a, like a crush thing on him or, I I mean, he's all about power and, and she provides him power with the, um, there's a little the gas, yeah, the gas capsules snapple. that he snapple snap snap goals snap goals. Did you just snap make capsules. that up? There yeah. you go. There yeah, you go. The, the, the You're gonna confuse capsules. people. Okay, so the the snap goals the snap goals <laughs> that, that he he breaks and gets instant roid rage. Can can can, can we drop the, the the spoiler thing again so I can oh. so we can say something? Boom! Spoiler. The uh, at, at this point, I think if you didn't get anything beforehand, you're thinking that this is powering up him because you think he's the he, that that he's Ares. Because I mean, I'm I'm sure you unless you realized something way earlier on than I did, but I I thought I thought that I was like, oh well, if he's Ares, then that's powering him up, and I was wrong about that. But we'll we'll, we'll get into how wrong I was on my prediction because I can be wrong on predictions, people. This yes. movie proved it because not, I was wrong twice. Yes, he was. I was wrong twice, and I was glad I was wrong. But anyways, continue with your discussion on the snap goals. Um, well, I just I just thought talk, uh, Dr. Poison was just so interesting. Um, female female villain. Very, very, very powerful female yeah, uh, villain. Yeah, very, very powerful and very, um, very messed up, <laughs> to, to say the least. She... You know, when they're in that that gala later on, mm-hmm. um, you know, sh- she carries herself very well. And and it was just interesting just to watch her in general. I thought, thought she was, um, I mean, she truly believed that she was doing the right thing. Um, and it's scary, you know, how powerful this woman was. And, and even later when... When somebody meets his um, his end, which we can you can tell me when we can talk about that. But um, she continues on, but then she has a moment of humility, 
um, yeah. you know, later on, too. We'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, so... Even though this is the... We're spoiling right. stuff. We we want to save, the I guess, the third act for, for a little bit. Yeah, so um, just... She was just an interesting character. I did like, but like I said, I did like the dy- dynamic between the two of them. I thought they played really well off of each the other. The Ludendorff and mm-hmm. Doctor Poison. Yeah. Well, I, like I said because I thought he was Ares. So yes. I thought that, that was like that. That her making this poison and feeding the war was feeding him. Right. But which I, which would make sense. Like it, it was would. a good it, it was a good conclusion. You, I can see why you thought that. But I, yeah. But yeah, so right before the gala, they, they they took that town, and they had the whole you know trench war the trench warfare stuff where she she got to experience kind of firsthand battle, which she did, which which Wonder Woman did phenomenal during. Mm-hmm. Um, she I, th- I thought that was a great scene, you know, her against the machine guns and everything, and you know her deflecting bullets. Well, she and and she gets frustrated um, with Steve because. You know, he's he's all about the, the end mission. Yeah. And she is very conflicted of, well, why would we not help these people? They're right there. Yeah. Like, why? why I don't understand why we would do that. And, you know, just the way she just takes off and, and all the guys behind her are like, what is she oh, doing? <laughs> oh crap! Oh cra- you know, uh, what she's what, oh she's taking their cover. It was really neat to see them realize, oh, I see what she's doing. She's yeah. taking their cover so that we can we can get behind and and, and you push know. forward. Yeah, exactly. So it was kind of cool to see them unify like that. Um, another thing that, that I wanted to, to kind of mention real quick. So she was introduced to this ragtag group of you know of different characters and stuff that that Trevor had kind of organized together and we're introduced to the chief um we're introduced to um the sniper which i'm not remember his name uh oh charlie that's right charlie and samir and charlie samir and the chief mm-hmm. we're introduced to them and they, and you kind of get this quick little backstory on a few of them uh charlie is a sniper but he's haunted by the fact that you know as as it's in war, a lot of snipers are haunted by the fact that they, you know, have to look people dead in the eye. And I think that this was something I brought up earlier that I wanted to mention now, is that she didn't understand that, that there was no honor in that kind of killing. That that to her as an Amazon, a fight is face to face. You right. see your opponent, you fight them, knowing who they are, and that she did not find any honor in that. Which I thought was another good good reference to the fact that you know that's how. You know, she was raised and everything, and how the Amazons fight is, is with honor for against one another or against their opponent. Um, Samir, I think, made a good point of he wanted to be a, an, an actor. Mm-hmm. He, he loves acting, but what did he say was the reason he couldn't do it? Uh, the shade of his skin. Exactly. Yeah. And finally, the chief. <laughs> Stereotypical. But... What does he say when when he's asked why he's fighting, or you know what about his people? Uh, well, they they made it circle around to where um, he he basically you know looked over at Steve uh, Steve Trevor's character and was like his people killed uh, mine, yeah. I killed my people, you know. And so I think it was those interactions were really starting to get her to understand how war works, exactly. and you know that it's not. It's not you kill this one bad guy and everything stops. Bingo. So. So that, I, I thought that was, you know, a great way to kind of show her, I mean, to show Wonder Woman, Diana, you know, the the horrors of war, too. That, you know, that that she's been kind of introduced to war as, you know, war is a bad thing, but there's glory in battle for an Amazon. But mm-hmm. it's not always the most glorious thing. Like, she's, she's put with the sniper who, you know, she kind of talks down to, but then later learns that, you know, he has an amazing voice and has his own, you know, burdens to bear and everything. So I, th- I thought that was very interestingly done. And, of course, you know, you did make a good point earlier that, that, that Steve's out to, you know, complete his mission, and she's just kind of along for the ride at certain points, mm-hmm. which I think it kind of flip-flopped. But but with the town battle, once they get out of those trenches, where they go to the town... Oh my gosh, I thought that was really well done. And by the way, to to jump out of the movie real quick, this is the first time the director's ever done something of this level action. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have believed that. 
Right. I wouldn't have believed that. The fighting inside that, that she does where she's sliding around and just, you know. It's just, so cool looking. Just showing how powerful she is, too. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that. And once again, as we said, as the story progresses, she progresses in her strength and, you know, knowing what she can do. And the, where she picks up that tank and, you know, like, slams into that. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. The the one machine gun um, well, and, and truck. Well, and I, I like the way that, um, that Steve remembers stuff he saw in the battle <laughs> at the beach. Yes. Um, and where they take a, was it like a door of something? Yes, they, they, they take a door from the um, armored car that she slams and, into. And he has them all get underneath of it. And um, they do, like she did with the, they had the shield and they yeah. jumped on the shield to get a higher. For her to take out that yeah. sniper since Charlie couldn't do it. Right. So it, that was, that was kind of neat too. I like the way that, you know. That was put in there as well. Yeah, I thought that was very well done. And um, I, I got a question for later that I don't know if if there is a definitive answer. And I know that other people have brought this up, so I might as well ask it now. In your opinion, can she fly? At any point in this movie? At any point, yes or no, or when? I think it's going to be one of those things that like, maybe in the Justice League movie or something like that, she may do it. But I think in this movie, she clearly, um, I feel like she's just very big leaps and kind of gliding down. Or, uh, I mean, there's a scene where, which we'll go into more detail in a little bit, but there's a scene where she's wrapped up in metal and she breaks free and she projects straight up and she kind of stays there. For a yeah. while, so I mean that part of it looked like she was hovering slash flying, but for the most part, to me, it looked like she's just taking really big. So kind of like in leaps. Man of Steel when Superman was, he would leap and then eventually he figured out how to fly. Right, I think it's the same thing. I think she can fly. I just don't think she's quite learned how to do it yet. I'm kind of agreeing with you. The end of the movie is very ambiguous on whether she can or can't, and um. Uh, Batman versus Superman, she can jump. She can definitely jump, but it never really definitively says if she could. Um, she has been able to fly in the comics before very easily, so that's why I was just wondering, in your opinion, it doesn't really matter to this movie? No, but I think, I think it's, she hasn't truly realized what power, like, what she can truly do, possibly, is, is my opinion, is maybe she can fly, she just hasn't truly realized that ability yet. Right, yeah. Because she, she obviously has a lot more abilities than were shown. And, I mean, she's obviously very durable. She can fall from great heights and take very little damage from it. Um, right. So, I guess... I mean, there was the whole sad part about the town being bombed that they just saved with the gas. Well, that, and, well and the reason why that was so sad is because they really did a good job of... Um, you know, there was uh, the battle, and then you you got to see the celebration. And she got to see Snow, which I thought she did. Oh, my gosh. Yes. That, kudos on the acting It on was that. really great the way they made her. You really could. You really believed that this is the first time mm-hmm. she was seeing yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was. But it was. That's what, like I said, that's what made the. Um, that's what made everything so much more heart-wrenching about the town is just because they made sure to take the time. I don't think it was very long. What, like it, five, it, ten minutes? It, it, it was long enough for you to know that these people felt like they were fine, like like the war was over for them. Like, like their town was taken back and that, you know, the darkness had subsided and, and everything was, everything was going to be hunky-dory. Right. It, it was enough to know that. So when it happened, it was, was a very heart-wrenching moment too. Um, mm-hmm. So let's get into the end of the movie now. So this is this is I think where we're gonna have a lot of fun with this discussion. Do you you want me to do you want you want me to embarrass myself real quick with with my quick predictions of stuff that none of them came to fruition, and then when I was like, oh man, sure. I'm kind of prided myself on this podcast of making some accurate predictions of certain yes. movies and video games and other stuff, but you can attest I was not wrong once. <laughs> but wrong twice and then blown away by it. Hey, and that's that's fine. So I knew that Ares was supposed to be in this. Right. I knew that Dr. Poison was a character, but I'm like, well, Ares has to be in this. So 
I originally was like, oh, it's it's um Ludendorff. And then around the time she was confronting him. But but can I say really quick? Yeah. They they do a good job of making you second guess that Ares is in the film. Yeah. Oh yeah, because there's the whole Trevor Steve Trevor keeps telling her he's like, Are you even sure you're after anything that's real? Yeah, I mean so so I thought that was a, a good way to kind of keep you guessing. Is Ares really in the film? Is it all in her head? Is it just she's manifesting this? It has to be Ares. Yeah. You know, she's overthinking it. So, so yes. Yeah, so continue, though. So you're kind of made to think it's a Ludendorff. Right. Oh, definitely. And then during, like, their confrontation, I went, wait a second. I think it's Dr. Poison. Uh-huh. I think that's going to be a twist that Ares is actually a female. Right. And that that's her, and that she has that stuff on her face to hide the scars she got from the battle with Zeus. Mm-hmm. And you kind of nodded, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. And then something happened after that. Sir Patrick suddenly appeared. But like apparitions. Well, just was in in this because ta- she was at like a watchtower overlooking this area. And he just and was, appears. Yeah, and was confused on why the war didn't stop. She's like, well, if the war... And he appears, and I'm like, oh my god, it's him. Well, but you don't... You're not sure if he's there, though. Because there's a few times when... Where he just kind of vanishes. It and looks appear, like he's... Yeah. It's like you're looking at him through a window, but he's not there. So you know what I'm I, saying? Like, I, it's not a, like a physical form. It looks more like a... You, I, ironically, I was more on board with, I was like, oh, well, he has to be the God of War because he keeps on, va- I'm like, that's godly power or mm-hmm, something or right. whatever. But I But they I just, make you think, is he really there yeah. or is he just in her mind? That too. So, there, so. so there's another thing, but it was revealed that, yes, um, Sir Patrick is Ares, the God of War. Yes. And it kind of also, he points out that he really doesn't, didn't do anything to cause this war. He just kind of was there for it. Well, he he inspired, like... He didn't lead people to war. He just... He, war happened, and he was just like, awesome. Well, no. He, like, Poison, Dr. Poison. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, he did inspire her. Yeah, he, ins- he would, like, whisper... So she felt oh, like it was in her mind, but he would like whisper like formulas to her. Or, yeah. So he good point, did. Inf- good point. He influenced people. Yeah. But he said he didn't directly lead. Yes. Them to war. Right. Directly. Yes. So I thought that was very well done, and then, I mean, dur- during this time, the little, the little ragtag band of Steve Trevor <laughs> misfits. Steve, yeah, are, are running around, you know, trying to stop this poison from getting out. And there's this whole epic fight. Yes. Oh man, um, between Wonder Woman and Ares, and I thought it was amazing how they did him. I thought that he was done so well that he kind of, you know, offers her a chance, you know, to join him because that's a cliche in movies. So why right, not? Of um, so that 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 was great. I enjoyed that, but. Um, I just thought the movie was just just kind of amped up then, and the fight between them was really good. How a- Ares, his powers are kind of up in the air, to be mm-hmm. honest. In the comics, it just depends on who's writing him. But he has been shown to be able to control weaponry, like any weapons of war. So that's why he could create swords and you know be able to c- control them. And well, it was everything. almost like he was t- uh, Magneto, to where he it, it seemed like as he was going places, he was just picking up metal and, and making just, them yeah. meld into. Well, yes. I, I loved how he formed his armor where, mm-hmm. like, it formed the helmet and he sort yes. of grabbed the helmet. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mimicking it, so if you if you hear me <laughs> you hitting my mic... You can't see it, but yes. <laughs> Once again, great audio, I mean, great podcast content right now of me <laughs> doing this. He grabbed and pulled down to make the eye slits. Yeah, that was kind of cool. It, his, I thought that, that was really cool because he had very comic-esque armor at that time and the whole battle between him and... Diana, and also she kind of lost hope too because she tries to use the God Killer on him because she thinks it's the sword, yeah, yeah. and it just turns into dust. Yeah. Well, he just holds up his hand; it just gone. Well, and he does the typical thing that a lot of movies do, where he's basically like, "Well, they didn't tell you everything, did they? Let me does, tell you." Does he you. actually point out that it's her? 
Yes. Okay, I was about to say, is he another one of those villains that goes, here's how you defeat me? Yeah. You're the god killer. Well, but at first it doesn't matter because she doesn't know what the crap she's doing. She she loses faith in herself yes. and she kind of gives in at one point during the battle to kind of rage, anger, and everything in between. Because she's upset with, you know, man for, you know, she, she, is, she just kind of loses it for a little bit, which I thought was good to... To when she finally, you know, realizes herself at the end of the movie. I thought that was a good little moment of well, when she goes, control. when she loses control and goes in berserk mode, it's because the plane just blew up. Yeah, and she. I'm gonna say this now. This is not me making a prediction, but later on I might say, yeah, I, yeah, I predicted this. Quote unquote, Steve Trevor died. Well, well, it's the whole typical theme in a lot of movies of the power of love yeah i mean love unlocked because because they have the scene where you know there's that blast and she can't hear yeah and oh and it flashes back yes that, yeah. that was a good scene I yeah like that. it was and so the first time you see the scene you can't hear what they're saying it's very muffled and like if you had a, a you know a bomb <laughs> right near your head and, and it kind of affects your hearing for a little bit um, but then when she rethinks about that interaction, then it, she can then understand what he was saying to her. Um, and it was, it just kind of washes over her. You know, she understands love now and, and, and the feelings that come from it. And, and that, you know, maybe the human race isn't so bad after all. There's, you know, there's some bad parts to it, but she sees the good in it too. She sees why you know, they're worth fighting for. You know, why they deserve I, I, her protection. I think that was good because she had the opportunity to basically destroy Dr. Oh. Poison, you know, the one who yeah. caused all this, and mm -hmm. she kind of turns it down. Right. So, so Be yeah. Well, because Dr. Poison is basically crouching and cowering in fear, you know. From while, while she's holding a tank, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if we point out well, she's, she's holding a she tank. She is <laughs> holding a tank. Yes. Um, and, and I like the way they had her lightning attack. She does use her the, the, the lightning the, attack. She uses the bracelets to, mm -hmm. to kind of throw it back. Which in um, an older Wonder Woman uh, comic, they point out that those metal cuffs are a gift from Zeus. So. Well, it depends on the origin, because yeah. I know it as they're a reminder of Hercules imprisoning them. Mm -hmm. and Wonder Woman has a lot of strange... Or yes. If we ever do a weird stuff in comics, I'm <laughs> sure we'll have one of her origins in there. Because trust me, it's weird, and it's changed a lot. Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that really shocks Ares... Yeah, is that is, she kind of throws the power back. He at, yeah, he keeps throwing it at her, and she basically absorbs it. Because she, after so many times of absorbing it, then she releases this, you know, <laughs> huge, straight up, and she's, she's basically in the cross, like the form of a cross, and just... Yeah. So it was pretty. It was Once pretty awesome. again, where where she's kind of floating, possibly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yes, exactly. That's where you're just like, well, maybe she can fly, or, or I'm still along the theory that we said that she is learning how she's kind of learning as she goes. So she she will be able to. She's not quite mastered how to do it yet. True. Um. So I mean. So the movie ends and it kind of jumps real quick to present day where mm -hmm. she's like, and and she randomly just jumps. She's in Paris still and she kind of jumps off to the same. She the gets day. a package from Wayne. Yeah, that. That was at the beginning. It was at the beginning and end of the movie. Right. It was kind of she. She saw this picture and had a flashback in her own mind, I guess, to relive everything. Mm -hmm. Um. I thought that was very well done. It was kind of tying, you know, the fact that don't forget there's a Justice League movie on the way. <laughs> but it was nice, though. Like, d we don't want to get into that. But there, there's been other other movies that are so focused on forwarding the universe of, yes. of its of its, you know, whatever one we're talking about. This was a nice, just a nice little. Beginning and end, kind of like you said, a little little hey reminder. This is coming soon, but it was it was well done. It was well placed. I, I like the fact that they 
they showed the picture and and they had the watch you know the watch was there too that was steve's that he gave her yes so it, it was a nice nice little nod i i okay so i guess if we're doing our star wars or you know any of our final thoughts on this and unless you do you got some other stuff inspirations all that um i mean no not really well obviously it was inspired by the well, comic. Yes, of course. Now, yeah, did, comic book movies are a little different. Though. I know, I know. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to throw that in. Yes. But, um, so your final thoughts on this? Um, my final thoughts are it's definitely, definitely worth checking out. It is a extremely, extremely um, good first showing of a major film with a female lead character in it. Um. So, I mean, there has been, of course, female superhero characters in other movies. But, you know, this is the first time it's really focusing on, like, it's her movie. Um, So, I thought it was a really good first showing there. Um, It gives me hope that other ones, like, uh, maybe Captain Marvel. (laughs) Or Mm -hmm. some other other characters, um, you know, I'm very excited and, and... can't wait to see in the future but it was a it was a really nice mix of of really great fighting scenes um versus kind of grounding you a little bit to to why we're human and what what makes us great and what makes us bad too our flaws and our our you know our good sides if i had to nitpick or say anything uh, it it had a few noticeable um special effects glitches that I'm surprised made it through the cut, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on that, all that, Ellie. Um, the, well, like I said, I mentioned this way earlier on that the one nitpick is there are, I don't, I guess the Ares battle is where it came out the most for me. There was like one or two scenes mm-hmm. where just something looked wrong. Rag and it wasn't, dolly. It's yeah, just like it's just thrown around. Yeah, it, it, it's just in the lighting look weird on her and one of the things. And then, like I said, that's that's once again that's me nitpicking at like that's that's me chipping away at the giant statue that is this movie. Like I'm I'm not even breaking like anything off of this mm-hmm. sort of thing. So I mean, if we 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 just kind of wanted to, I mean, we're we're sitting here praising this movie, and I guess sometimes we want to make sure that we still stay grounded by being like, right. e- there there are some issues. Yeah, so. and and that's nothing's perfect. So I just just wanted to point out that you know, uh, overall this movie is great, but it definitely had a few little things. I was surprised this day and age. I was surprised that you know there was that in there, but but like I said, uh, just to wrap up real quick. Overall, it's a great movie. Really cool themes in it, political and and uh, discrimination, and so it was. Yes, it, it took a nice stand. Um, mm-hmm on itself but the sorry the, the, the these are your final thoughts on it oh right I, yeah no no i was i was just saying um really likable characters i mm-hmm. love the group the troop so to speak yes. that um that the they, ragtag group yes and they um they grew well together um, i agree with that yeah so i just it was great i really did like it overall my final thoughts on it i mean i've i've spoken a lot through this i definitely agree with you on a lot of your stuff um my only thing is, I might have said this in a previous podcast, this movie had to be a win for DC, in my opinion. I, I, I think Justice League is another one that has to, you know, be a win, but the, a lot of the critics, I know that some people don't care about the critical, you know, Me. opinions and everything <laughs> on stuff, but at the same time, you kind of need that to continue your movie franchise, especially if you want to be ambitious with it. Mm-hmm. I think this was an amazingly done movie. I think it was a definite huge win for DC, but at the same time, it was a huge win for Wonder Woman as a character. Yeah. I think that, that, you know, she is a character that a lot of people know of. It's kind of one of those, like, if you're like, oh, well, you know, there's, you know, all these characters in DC, and it was, like I said, Wonder Woman was one of the first ones to bring us a female-led movie, which is surprising. Right. So I just and, and I forgot to mention too the just the um, more with the Amazons than anything else the costumes are just really amazing. I, I yes I I will give the period pieces and everything. Um, it was it was very well done and and, and the the 
the battle armor yeah. was really cool. And um, even, um, go ahead and say the name again of Paradise Island. Uh, Themyscira. Thank you. Um, even even the horses were yeah. were donning some amazing armor. A- armor. So Armaments. I, yeah, so high, high praise to the uh, costume people um the costume designers and all those that that yeah. put all that together um so yes sorry so I, I definitely think this was a good way to once again give the i guess trinity each of their own movies since i consider um batman versus superman more of a batman movie than a superman movie so you have yes. man of steel for superman mm-hmm. batman has batman ver- i mean superman versus batman and then now you have wonder woman so you have the dc trinity mm-hmm to move forward into Justice League. Right. Well, and there's Suicide Squad floating around there, yeah. and, and Superman's <laughs> dead, so, well, dead, quote-unquote. So I, I, I liked it because it, it had enough mythology. It did not, as we mentioned earlier, did mm-hmm. not have to weigh itself down with having to expand the universe anymore, which I think the other movies and some other ones might suffer from here and there. But overall, definitely great. Can't wait to see what they do next. I hope mm-hmm. they keep it up. A fantastic job from a um, from Gal Gadot. I thought she did an amazing job as Wonder yes. Woman. Great movie overall. Definitely yes. a win for DC. And um, I guess with that, go to break. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys on the other side of this break. Hey, my name's Paul, and I'm not an animal expert. I'm Donna, and I'm not an animal expert either. And together we do a podcast about animals called Varmints. Every week we pick an animal, do a bunch of research on it, and bring you some interesting facts about that animal. But we don't stop there. We talk about that animal in movies, TV, and other pop culture. And we talk about whether or not that animal would make a tasty dish, and how intelligent we think it is on the scale of 1 to 10. It's exactly like one of those fancy PBS nature documentaries. Except with more poo jokes. New episodes go live every Thursday wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Or you can visit us at BlazingCaribouStudios.com. <laughs> Varmints! Varmints! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a fun conversation about Wonder Woman and everything. Yes, I want to go see it again. We should. I know. Maybe. We got other movies to go see. We got a lot of other movies to go see, <laughs> but we've got a lot of other stuff to review real quick. Um, or we've got a review. There we go. There, there, yeah, there's, there's, there's my words. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. We've got actually a five star review on our iTunes, Ellie. If you would be so kind. Yes, we have one, and it's titled "So Much Fun," um, and this is from Strange Animals Podcast. And um, they put, I especially love the Star Wars episodes, but honestly, I enjoy the host banter and good humor so much that even if I'm not familiar with a movie or game they're discussing, I just enjoy listening. That is so awesome. Thank, Thank you, you very much for that. And that's once yes. again from the Strange Animals podcast. Uh, definitely go check her out. She she does um, discussions on strange animals, both real, fictional, and possibly real. <laughs> Question mark? Question mark, indeed. <laughs> All right. So with that, um, we've gone really long this week, so we're just going to wrap it up real quick. But we will um, – Ellie will be back in two weeks. I'll be back next week. Um, and when Ellie is back, it will be E3 time. But don't yes! forget – but don't forget, we will have a Star Wars episode coming out, too. So look forward to that. We'll be discussing Rogue One. Also, don't forget to read The Umbrella Academy, Volume yes, 1. Volume that 1. Is, that yep. is our read this. So what are some of the best ways to find us on the internet if you want to listen to us, Ellie? Uh, well, of course, iTunes. Give us a five-star review or read on the podcast, and thank you and praise everything that you've done. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. You um, can also find oh, us on SoundCloud, yes. Stitcher, I, St- SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, Tuned In, and Google Play, and probably a few other ones that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. But There's so many. If you want to follow us on Facebook, you can go to... Zing This. If you want to tweet at us, you can... At. You can tweet, tweet. At Zing This. If you want to look at some pictures we do every now and then and behind the scenes stuff, you can go to Instagram at Zing This Podcast. If you want to watch us play some games such as Injustice, which I was playing the other day, and you got to hear my first impressions of Wonder Ooh, Woman. Sneak in- peek. Including a story that I did not tell on the podcast about our experience at the movies. I'm not talking about it on the podcast. You had to have tuned in to find out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you would go to twitch.tv slash zingness. If you want to help support the podcast, you can go to www. 
patreon.com slash zing this. If you want to see some YouTube stuff, which we are working on content, I keep saying that, but we will get something uh, out eventually. I know. People you are going to start getting mad. <laughs> you can go to zing this. Just search it on, on YouTube. But if we can get over 100 people liking us on there, it will just be youtube.com slash zing this. Nice. So help us out with that. Yeah. And finally, if you want to email us directly, you can go to zing this at gmail.com. Finally, a lot of our sound effects are done by A.A. Ron, so we want to thank him real quick and finally as always dj golden boy 89 play us, us out, out.